Hi and welcome to the Any Logic Modelers YouTube channel. This video is number two in a two-part series about using Java profilers to optimize your model's performance. In the first video we discussed how you can detect and then correct memory leaks inside your model to reduce the amount of memory that your application requires. In today's example, we're going to look at how you can find functions and things that are executed inside your model that consumes a lot of CPU time. So with that said, let's dive into this very simple example. We've asked an intern to develop some basic starting blocks for our bigger model, which consists of an agent, which is going to be moving between different states. Keep it very simple, it's just moving between states to F with certain timeout transitions. Now, this can pre represent a number of things in real life processes. For example, an order that's going through uh, waiting for approval, approval rejected, being processed, etc. Or trucks being moved through a supply chain where they are waiting for product being loaded, offloaded, in maintenance, etc. Now, what we've also asked our intern to do is to record the statistics of the number of agents inside each state every hour for a full year. So let's run the model and see how it goes. So as we can see, it starts off, everything seems fine. We've got our 10,000 agents here, although the model execution is pretty slow. Now, if we continue running this for the full year, we'll see that it takes about a minute on this machine to completely finish the execution. And we haven't even added the additional agents, additional logic, or even more statistics. So we need to figure out where are we consuming a lot of the CPU processing power. Now, luckily with any logic using Java as the underlying programming language, there exists a number of tools for us that we can use to analyze the performance. One of these is called a Java profiler. Now we're going to be using Visual VM in this video for instructions on how to install it on your machine. Check the link to the blog post in the description below. Okay, so I'm going to pause the model and then we're going to start up Visual VM. So you'll see on the left hand side of the application that there's a number of things that you can connect to. So the one is the com.anylogic.database, which is part of the Anylogic's internal database. We're not going to connect to that. And we've got com.anylogic.ms, which is our actual simulation model. So if you double click on this, it'll open up the application overview here. If we click on monitor, you'll see that there's no CPU activity. We're consuming about half of the memory, so that's not currently our problem. And if I restart the model where we are now, you should see a massive increase in the CPU use sheets depending on your machine setup, right? Now we want to analyze this, so we're going to the sampler page, we're going to click on CPU, and while the model is running, it's being executed, we are sampling what the CPU is working on. So we're going to let it run for a few seconds, and then we're going to hit the stop button here. We can, we can stop our model as well, or just pause it, that's fine. And now you'll see that there is a whole number of threads that's being executed. And, but we're only interested in the AnyLogic model execution thread. So I'm going to click on this thread filter. We're going to deselect show all threads. We're only going to look at show AnyLogic model execution thread. Okay. So if we expand this field, you'll see that it automatically sort of ends the expansion where we can see most of the CPU processing powers being used. 53% is being used on some engine function called transition timeout.execute. And if we have a look here, it's part of the my agent.execute action of, and it's the enter and exit state. So these are probably just the transitions between the different states. So because that is internal, there's not really anything we can do about it. It's just the transition timeout, right? So let's close this one. Let's have a look at the next one, which is an event timeout. So it's an event that is created by the engine. And we can see that it drills down here to dataset.update and update. And we have a look here, F collection, it's part of the any logic utilities, find all. Because we can see there's a function called find all, which is used when updating the data sets inside the model. So we've got six data sets here, and it's the data sets that live inside the chart. So let's get back to our model. We can close this one now, and let's have a look and see what the intern did inside this chart update function because the transitions between the states in the state chart is not something that we want to do anything about. And here we can see that, you know, the intern uh, looked at the blog post we did recently about the predicates using Lambda functions and the useful utility functions inside any logic, find all, find first, etc. 
and they use the find all function when um, getting the value for the number of agents in state A, B, C, D, etc. And this is the culprit that's taking too much time. Now, once that you find the cause for your slow execution performance, you need to do one or two things. Either you need to improve the performance of this function, like the find all function, or you need to call it less, right? So if we're calling the find all function a million times, you need to try and call it only a couple hundred times. Now, since this find all function is an internal function inside any logic, we can't improve the performance of this function. So we have to go for the second option, which is trying to call it um, less. But what's happening here is for every time that we update the chart, for every data set, we cycle through all the agents. We've got 10,000 of them, so that takes a bit of time. So what if we just cycle through them once, get the counter for everyone that's in a specific state, and then afterwards add these counters to a data set? So this is a bit of work. Luckily, I have done this beforehand. So if we look at the optimized example that I've got here, you'll see that I created six data sets. We've got a little event here, which cycles through all the agents just once. And depending on which state they're in, we add to this counter. So we've got a little um, array of integers, which has got six spaces in it for the six um, states. And then at the end, we just add them to the database. And we've changed our chart to now not recalculate anything, but rather just use the data sets that we've calculated. Now, another way to do this, which is arguably a bit better, depending on your specific model um, setup, is that every time an agent changes state, it increments and decrements that counter, and then you add them to the data sets. That way, you save on not having to cycle through all your agents, but the agents now need to record their status change, right? So if the status change or the recording of that state is time-consuming, you will save on the um, cycling through the agents, but you'll lose on the recording of that statistic. Now, there's no general rule to say which is better. You need to make the changes and run your profiler again. So with that said, let's run our optimized version. Let's um, analyze it in the profiler and see how much better that we actually do. Okay, so the model is being executed. We go back to our profile. You'll see that the old model has now been grayed out. And if we upload the new model, <clears throat> we have a look at our sampler. We have a look at the CPU speed. Let it run a few seconds. Then we can stop it. We are only interested in the execution thread. And if we drill down here, we can see that now this is taking a mere 14% of the CPU time versus the 40% that we had previously. This event is that execute action of, and you can see there's nothing more that we've, that we've got here. It's literally just running through that function. And our transition timeout, which is still the transition between states, uh, which is not something that we can do about unless we reduce the number of agents or we completely change our logic. So that's it. If you want to learn more about profiling for memory optimization, please watch the first video. The link will be in the description below. Or go and read some more on the blogs on theanylogicmodeler.com. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.